Can we play in this show? So I scout them. Can I? All right. If you're happy and you know, clap your hands. Just checking. All right. You'll notice on your uh, on your table, you got those little uh, those little things in front of you that are holding your salt and pepper shakers. On the back side of those, you'll see these little slips, these little um, comment cards for free raffle. Right there, guys. We ask that sometime during the show, very discreetly, so not to distract. Uh, fill these out and hand them to your servers, because at the end of the show, we're going to have a drawing for three really cool prizes. Yes, two of which are free passes, and one of which is sex with a celebrity of your choice. Yeah. Although, they did tell me one of the prizes might not be available tonight. But, um, I don't, I, I hope it's not the free passes! And, uh, <laughs> on your way out, if you want to pick up one of these, one of these flyers for our upcoming shows, you saw the video, we have some great comics coming up, including, uh, Jen Cobra, you saw Tom Rhodes, incredibly funny, Christopher Titus is gonna be here November 1st and 2nd, yeah. So, that's definitely gonna sell out quick, so please, grab one of these, check us out online at flapperscomedy.com. With that said and done, are you ready for your featured comedian tonight? I need from the back too, I can't hear you. Uh, I like it. Sides, you doing all right? Excellent. All right, your featured comedian, uh, she comes to us from the Bay Area. She was voted California's funniest female. Put your hands together for Rebecca Arthur. So if you're lucky, I'm the celebrity. <laughs> By now, some of the more perceptive of you may have noticed that I'm as big as a damn house. I try to ignore the fact that I'm so huge, but people don't let me forget. I was in this Holiday Inn one time, I'm walking down the corridor. And I get passed by this old couple. Not like anybody here. I mean, really old, you know, like born as the earth cooled old. And I guess the old lady's kind of hard of hearing, because after they get a ways past me, she says really loud, she says, that's the biggest woman I ever saw. Well, I thought it was kind of funny at first, and I get to thinking, you know, she's really old. She's seen a shitload of women. <laughs> and then there was this little tiny guy. And they got kind of fixated on me. As they want to do. And the first time he sees me, he looks up and he says, um, You're almost a giant. I don't know about the rest of you women, but to come on like that really makes me moist. Moist. Those guys way in the back like that, though. See, six years from now, you're going to be sitting around a birth... Pardon? I said you're really moist, just flap your arms out. You, you know, that's why you're sitting back there. And they, they let me come up. Yeah. I'm just going to talk to you guys. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't all bad, you know, growing up the biggest, biggest kid in the neighborhood. For example, I learned, I learned uh, early on that I could make myself disappear. It's true. The other kids go, uh, we'd be playing hide and seek, they go run and hide. I didn't have to. I just turned to the side and say the magic words. 
you better not fucking see me. <laughs> so yeah, I notice how huge I am. I notice it when I have to buy my shoes online from blacksmith.com. <laughs> I noticed it the day I put on a blouse on over my head and forgot I was under a ceiling fan. <laughs> and I especially noticed it the day I found out I could set my boobs on top of the dressing room door at Mervyn's. <laughs> I realized how old I was as they cascaded down here the side. <laughs> A little bit more about me. I um, I like to sneak into the Braille library and iron the books. Well, it's not like anybody sees me. I want to donate a kidney to a midget. I think it'd be awesome to watch the doctors try to stuff it all inside. <laughs> We've got the body of a 20-year-old. That's not the joke. I'm just hoping the police don't find where it's buried. I don't like toast and I don't like people that do. So that makes me like toast intolerant. <laughs> or you think that one's bad. Just wait. <laughs> I fake orgasm sometimes when I masturbate. <laughs> well, I don't want to disappoint myself. <laughs> Because I try really hard. <laughs> it's not easy getting a woman my size off. I've known some women that get off just sitting on top of a washing machine. I have to straddle a cement truck. I mean, sure, I get encouragement. The driver jumps out. Get off, get off. I say, I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> three kids, so at least three times in my life, in an alcoholic blackout. <laughs> I actually had somebody come up and say, you don't look like you'd have kids. I don't, I don't know if that means they think I'd eat them. And, you know, I just wasn't a good mom. I didn't, I didn't have one of those bumper stickers, you know, that said, my kid's an honor student. My bumper sticker said, my kids went to school. <laughs> I think. I mean, they weren't home, so that's an important thing. That, and I'm kind of ashamed. I put my oldest son up for adoption. It's really hard to get rid of a 30-year-old, you know that? Is there like a time lapse or something? You know, like everybody else over here laughs, and then all of a sudden it, the joke trickles over there. But, uh, I gotta go over and spend some time with those people. Um, you know, I just um, my kids were cute when they were little. You know, it'd be time for bed, they go running upstairs to get their jammies, open the closet, I'd come jumping out. <laughs> Oh, the happy times. Social workers have no sense of humor, you know that? <laughs> I drive a Honda Civic. Um, 
<laughs> yes, it's possible. Although I admit it's kind of like one of those clown cars in the circus. You know? I'm kind of like, well, it's not unfold, I kind of erupt out of the Honda. And it has a strange effect on people. I was, um, I just thought of something else for some day. <laughs> If all some of these voices in my head would just shut up for a little while. <laughs> They're still laughing at the ta at the toast joke. <laughs> anyway, so I rear into this truck one time, you know, and, this, and the guy gets out and he's going to get all pissed off at me, you know, and he's coming back. And all of a sudden I erupt out of the Honda. And it's like all of a sudden I'm in a Japanese monster movie. It's like, oh, oh, Godzilla! <laughs> Godzilla's cool, by the way. I mean, he's big, he gets to act like it. I knock one person off the sidewalk. It's like, he broke my arm, he broke my arm. I watch a lot of, I watch a lot of monster movies, I like them. Um, do you guys, anybody, this is probably old stuff, but do you guys remember Mothra? The Mothra, the giant moth? What the hell was he going to do? Eat every sweater in Tokyo? <laughs> oh my god, Mothra's coming. We're going to be cold all winter. <laughs> my favorite monster was the mummy. And it was that not the, the new ones or updated. I mean, the old one, you know. Some of you old folks would remember. You know, one in the bandages, and he dragged that leg. I mean, how hard was it to get away from this guy? <laughs> See, I figure if somebody said, hey, Rebecca, you got the mummy's curse, I just moved to the East Coast. Because, I mean, if he wants me, he's going to have to walk it. <laughs> There's no way this guy's getting on an airplane. Nobody looks more Middle Eastern than a mummy. <laughs> so I figure in about 10 years, when he gets as far as Pennsylvania, you know, I'll fly back. <laughs> Oh, shit! <laughs> so, I'm, uh, I'm like most comics, I don't have a... I don't make a lot of money. I don't have any health insurance. I have Kaiser. <laughs> Kaiser Permanente, the Ellis Island of the medical community. <laughs> and I know that's a racist comment. But I'm white, and that's how we roll. So. <laughs> My doctor's always got this, like, frown on her face. And I guess it started the first appointment, because they give you this, like, list of symptoms for you to fill out, you know, of your medical history. And I'm looking down this list, and one of the questions was, do you experience pain during intercourse? And I wrote down, not if the winches and pulleys are properly aligned. <laughs> the thing that really pisses me off about Kaiser. I don't know, do you guys, when you go to the doctor, what do you want? Feel better. No. Well, it's kinda. Drugs. We want drugs. I want fucking drugs. You feel better. Yeah, feel, you know. I, I got a reason, I'm sick, give me drugs, you know? So I went in there with back pain, okay? So I'm thinking muscle relaxers, pain pills. They give me a pamphlet <laughs> dealing with back pain. So I guess that's their, that's their solution to everything. You know? They have a migraine, it's migraines in you. Your leg falls off hopping through life. <laughs> The one thing that really gets me mad, but not just Kaiser, any doctor, anywhere, anyone, you, you just go in there for any reason, you know, I just, like if I break my pinky, you know, I go going, oh, I broke my pinky, please doctor, oh, please do something about my pinky, and they say, sure, come on right in, but first, we gotta weigh you. What? No, no, it's the middle of the day, I've eaten, I got my clothes on, you know, I haven't gone to the bathroom, I haven't cut my hair, I've eaten, you know, you just, no, 
No, everybody knows how you weigh yourself. First thing in the morning, after you go to the bathroom, before you put any clothes on, you know, with one hand on the counter, just to kind of steady yourself, right? You know, just because you got to get an accurate read, you know. Just... So I'm on a campaign against strip clubs. Well, it's not because I have a moral issue. It's not because I think it's wrong. They won't take my applications. It's because they don't call them strip clubs. They call them gentlemen's clubs. Well, let's put a turd on a stick and call it a lollipop. <laughs> Because you're not going to walk into one of those places and see somebody go, Please, miss, wouldst thou care to dance in my lap? <laughs> Actually, I've had kind of a fantasy about doing a lap dance. Any idea how much damage a woman my size can do with a lap dance? <laughs> of course, I figured the only way I would make money at it would be charge 25 cents to start and $500 to stop. <laughs> Just start grinding away. Come on, baby, what's it gonna be, money or ambulance? <laughs> well, obviously, I'm an ancient comic. I, uh, but I find that, you know, I still have to communicate my life experience to all these young, fertile buttholes in the audience. <laughs> I didn't say that out loud, did I? So, you know, I've had to try and figure a way to reach out in their language, so I wrote a rap. <laughs> it's not a very good rap, but I'm old and I'm white, so fuck you. <laughs> I hate growing old a lot. My body is going to pot. I got wrinkles on my face that I can't erase and a worn out, dried up twat. <laughs> I get no hump, no bump, just cellulite on my rump. My youth is past went really fast. I'm an over 50 from. And you know this ain't bragging. My time of the month is lagging. I'm growing hair where it used to be bare. My tits are really sagging. I got a spine just beginning to curl. Underarms like a flying squirrel. Can't get a date, don't have a mate, because I'm a craggy, wrinkly girl. And you know what's even sadder? I can't control my bladder. The time of the is near. Wrap plastic around my rear. I used to be brave and afraid of the grave, and now a three-hour movie I fear. My body runs hot and cold. My navel's hiding in a fold. My vagina's dry, got cottagey thighs. A hey, word, I'm getting old. Thanks a lot, I'm Rebecca Arthur.